Interpreting all the research out there on nutrition can be pretty confusing for people because a lot of the comparisons used in these studies aren't very fair. For example, if you compare a vegan diet to a diet really high in processed foods, then of course the vegan diet is going to look healthy. And it's the same thing with a diet high in meat. If you compare a high meat diet to a diet full of crappy junk food, then of course a high meat diet is going to look better. But I'm very excited to share that a study just came out from Stanford that is perhaps the best controlled diet study out there. And they did a randomized controlled trial which lets them look directly at cause and effect of how different diets influence people's LDL cholesterol, their weight, and their insulin. And what they did is they compared a healthy omnivorous diet to a healthy vegan diet, and the only differences between those diets was whether some of the foods were coming from animal-based sources or vegan alternatives, and they kept the rest of the diets extremely similar and very healthy. And these researchers even went one step further and used identical twins in order to control for influences of genetics and environment. So I'm very excited to go over this study with you today. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time research scientist with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, whereas by night I share the results of other studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And this study from Stanford is in a top-tier journal, and it just came out like three days ago, and I pretty much never go over studies that are hot off the press or trending or anything like that because my research process is very slow and methodical, and I usually get a ton of studies on a topic before going over that topic. But this study is so strong and well-controlled and one-of-a-kind that it's worth going over on its own because I doubt we'll see many studies like it in the near future because it's very hard to achieve a twin study with randomized controlled diet intervention. It requires a lot of money and resources that a place like Stanford has available to them. And the study looked at 44 identical twins, both men and women, spanning a range of ages with an average of about 40 years old. And most of these twins still live together. So not only did the researchers control for genetic influences by using twins, but they also controlled for environmental influences by using these identical twins who grew up together and still mostly live together. So the effects of individual differences on how the diet might affect different health parameters is very well controlled for in this study. And they randomly assigned these twins to one of two diets over the course of eight weeks. One that was a healthy omnivorous diet, so a healthy diet that included animal products, and one that was a healthy vegan diet, so a healthy diet that included more plant-based alternatives. And they emphasized a lot of the same food groups in both diets, which included legumes and whole grains and fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds. So both diets had a lot of all those food groups. And in both diets, they also limited refined grains and added sugars. So the diets were very similar, except the omnivorous diet also had animal products, for example, meat and dairy and eggs and fish, whereas the vegan diet did not have any of those, and instead they ate more beans and also had meat alternatives like tofu and tempeh. And for the first four weeks, the researchers actually made all the meals and delivered them to the participants, and then for the second four weeks, they had the participants make their own meals once they had gotten the hang of it and had gotten a lot of nutrition counseling from the researchers on how to do these different diets. And importantly, there was no calorie restriction at all. Participants were all told to eat until satiated, so that they were not trying to lose weight they were just eating these two different healthy diets until they were full. And the participants also recorded what they ate in detail so that researchers could know what they ended up choosing to eat on their own. And the researchers included the data on the specific food groups and how many servings were eaten on each of the diets in their supplement. So I'm gonna show you some of those plots here that highlight the biggest differences that ended up happening between the vegan diet and the omnivore diet in terms of macronutrients, as well as different types of food. And first, the macros were pretty similar, except the vegans ate less protein and more carbs. Both groups ate about 38% fat while they were on these diets. And the vegan diet had less saturated fat and more polyunsaturated fat, and they had more insoluble fiber and starch than the omnivorous diet. And unsurprisingly, in terms of protein sources, the vegans ate way more beans as well as meat alternatives like tofu and tempeh, whereas the omnivorous diet ate way more animal-based sources of protein. And interestingly, people on the vegan diet ended up eating more grains of all types, including refined grains as well as whole grains. And they also ate more nuts and seeds as well as nut and seed butters. And so now onto our results for how these different diets affected people's health markers. And I just wanna remind you, these are not correlations. These are not epidemiological findings. This is an experiment, a randomized controlled trial that actually gets at cause and effect. So what these results are telling us are the causal effects of going on a vegan diet that is healthy versus an omnivorous diet that is healthy in terms of how it affects your health. And this is controlling for genetics and environment by using these identical twins. 
And first, for LDL cholesterol, compared to the vegan diet, people on the omnivorous diet had 20% higher LDL cholesterol. And in terms of how those points changed over the course of the eight weeks, the vegan diet group lost 14 more points of LDL cholesterol over the course of eight weeks. And the researchers themselves were pretty surprised to be able to see this big of a benefit of the vegan diet for LDL cholesterol, given that these participants started off pretty healthy, where they already had an LDL cholesterol level of 114 milligrams per deciliter. And in terms of fasting insulin levels, the omnivore diet group ended up with 30% higher insulin than the vegan diet group after these eight weeks. And in terms of units for you to be able to compare to your own blood test for insulin, if you're curious, if we're talking about PICO international units per liter, the vegans lost 20 points more over the course of eight weeks than the omnivores. And in terms of micro international units per milliliter, the vegan group lost three more points than the omnivore group over the course of eight weeks. But if you don't care about the units to compare to your blood test, then just a 30% difference where the vegan diet people ended up a lot better off in terms of insulin than the omnivore diet group. And as for weight, the vegan group lost four more pounds over the course of these eight weeks than the omnivore group. And in terms of other health markers, there weren't any statistically significant differences in the other markers that the researchers looked at, but the vegans were non-significantly lower in HDL cholesterol, triglycerides, dietary vitamin B12 intake, and TMAO than the omnivore group. And the main takeaways from that are what some of you may be thinking, which is that the vegan diet did not cause a rise in triglycerides, despite the fact that the vegan diet people ate more carbs and ate more grains. And also, this is just a reminder that, of course, if you're on a vegan diet, you need to have a B12 supplement or have fortified milks or other foods that are high in B12. And what this study is showing is that if you swap out animal-based foods for vegan alternatives, you do better in terms of cardiovascular risk factors and metabolic risk factors. And this is controlling for genetics and environment and the overall healthiness of the diet in terms of the non-animal versus animal replacement foods, because they all had a very healthy background diet besides just the addition of some animal foods or some vegan alternatives. And now for a more behavioral result, they unsurprisingly found that people who were on the more strict diet, aka the vegan diet, were not quite as satisfied with their diet, which is always going to happen on the more restrictive end of the spectrum for any diet because it's just harder to plan and make it happen. And another interesting finding is the fact that the LDL cholesterol benefits were actually slightly better during the period in which the researchers were actually making and delivering the meals for the participants. So when people really strongly adhered to these two healthy diets that were very well planned and whatnot, the difference between the diets was actually larger. So people got more of a benefit from that vegan diet when they were really sticking to it because they had the meals made for them. And because it seems like I need to say this five times to not get comments of people thinking it's correlational, this study was a randomized controlled trial where participants were randomly assigned. So these are not vegans or omnivores. These are people who are told, you're gonna eat a vegan diet and we're gonna give you all the food and you're gonna eat an omnivore diet and we're gonna give you all the food. But all these participants started off with just normal basic diets. None of them were naturally vegan. None of them were really high meat eaters. They were all kind of average. And then the researchers randomly chose who was gonna be vegan for this study and who was gonna be an omnivore for this study. And as always, I check for funding and industry interests because I hate the fact that industry is involved in nutrition research. And this study was not funded by any industry and none of the authors received any personal funding or speaking engagements or consulting gigs from any industry according to the conflicts of interest statement. However, one caveat is that one of the 14 authors received funding for a specific study, so not for themselves as a person, but to actually run a specific study from Beyond Meat for a different study, which was very disappointing to see because they were so close to having zero interests and I was almost very happy. However, in good news, the study didn't talk about Beyond Meat or even processed meat alternatives at all. They just talked about tofu and tempeh. And they even said that they emphasized reducing processed foods in order to make the diets healthier. So this actually seems against Beyond Meat's interest because Beyond Meat is a processed food and the study says we should eat less processed foods and also doesn't mention Beyond Meat. So I'm hoping there's no influence or bias there. I've been told by colleagues that I'm overly paranoid about industry funding, especially in this case because it had nothing to do with the study and actually the study is kind of bad for the industry. But still, I think given that another study by one of the authors was funded by a semi-related industry. We should take it with a teeny tiny grain of salt. And because I know this will be relevant for comments that I anticipate getting based on my past videos, it is important to note that studies finding that meat is good are pretty much invariably 
directly funded by the Beef Checkoff and pretty much every author on these types of studies as I talk about in a recent video are given consulting fees and speaker fees and personal fees from the beef industry. And same thing with collagen, all the studies finding that collagen is good for you are funded directly by collagen supplements. So at least this study is not actually funded by anyone that we're talking about today. This is just a more paranoid, being extra careful type of evaluation here. But the main takeaways from the study is that if you put someone on a healthy vegan diet, they will have improvements in LDL cholesterol, fasting insulin, and weight compared to someone who you put on a healthy omnivorous diet. And if you would like to get short written summaries of the main takeaways of every video, along with Q and A's and whatnot, then head on over to the Patreon, which is linked in the description below. And if you wanna support me in making these videos, then consider heading to the Patreon or to the GoFundMe for one-time donations, which is also linked in the caption below. And some of you have been so incredibly generous lately on both the GoFundMe and the Patreon that has kind of blown me away and has been a very nice holiday surprise. So I just wanted to say thank you so much. And it really means a lot to me that you like my content and wanna support me that generously. So thank you very much. And if you like this video, please like and share it so that other people can learn about this really cool new, super well-controlled study from Stanford. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below to stay up to date on all the science. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.